Welcome to the John Gardena classroom with the Dr. Colasso in the house. What's up? What's up? What's up? How are you doing? All right, everyone. We are week 32, which means verse 32. And it is a beaut, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let Dan start and then I'll, I'll rip off the observation after, okay? Let's go. Matthew 25, verse 40. Assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Golden. Very golden. Here's the observation. In the busyness and confusion of daily life, it is easy to lose focus and it is, is easy to become frustrated. We are imperfect human beings struggling to manage our lives as best we can, but we often fall short. When we are distracted or disappointed, we may neglect to share a kind word or a kind deed. This oversight hurts others, but it hurts us most of all. Matthew 25, 40 warns, Inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of my brethren, you did it to me. When we extend the hands of friendship to those who need it most, God promised his blessings. When we ignore the needs of others or mistreat them, we risk God's retribution. Today, Dad, slow yourself down and be alert for those who need your smile, your kind words, or your helping hand. Make kindness a centerpiece of your dealings with others. They will be blessed, and you will be too. When you spread a heaping helping of encouragement and hope to the world, you can't help getting a little bit on yourself. Period. Hmm. All right, what did you collect from either the verse or the observation, Daniel? Um, this verse is is really amazing. I I I feel like um you know the the general context that Jesus is 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 speaking this verse that he's communicating this verse in um you know there's a failure to recognize um him for for who he is and and he's saying like as you you know c come to me and you, like as as you see me as i am see others the way i see them kind of loosely um and <clears throat> and it's amazing because we are called to see god the way he is right first first and foremost i mean that's that's the the foundation of of, of our relationship with the lord him revealing himself to us and ourselves you know to our you know our real identity to ourselves um and in in all of that um is seeing people the way he sees them and seeing him in people because that's the reality i mean we, the way we see people the way he sees them is we see them in him um and you know it's kind of shocking because he's saying what you've done to them for them you've done to me you know yeah so the challenge of of saying, if if the Lord were before us, saying, you know, biding for our time, saying, I'm I'm hungry, or clothe me, I'm cold, I, you know, whatever He could possibly ask, you know, in this verse, it, it you know, or in the, in, in the um, actual observation, it lays out, you know, some of what the, the contextual verses around it is saying. Um, most people would say, yes, Lord, of course, you know, but. But going out of our way to see people the way he sees them and, and actually treat them as if they were he, there's just that challenge in that. He's challenging us to do so. And he's saying, he's not just saying, do it like you've done it. He's like, when you've done it, you've done it for me. You've done it to me. Um, and it's just kind of scandalous, you know what I mean, to, to, to think about that. Because I know myself, you know, uh, vulnerability here, like... I can make up a thousand excuses not to be inconvenienced or run the risk of lack for my own desires to uplift somebody else, especially if it's someone that is opposite of me. Like, am I doing to the person that is an antagonist in my life like I would to Christ? Like, probably not, you know? Yeah. I got self-preservation mode up and mm -hmm. I'm 
trying my best just to forgive and to whatever, but I'm not going out and serving. I'm not clothing. I'm not feeding. I'm not in all of that, you know, all the, all that stuff that maybe represents, um, cause my antagonist may not be hungry, but, but he's definitely lacking the food of, of my forgiveness or the, the fruit that nourishes him of my friendship, uh, above and beyond. But anyway, that's kind of, you know, just when I, think of this verse you know i i just that's what hammers hammer is hammered home in it um what about you what do you what do you what do you I touch just had a, a rush of what happened today and it goes back to what we talked about last week was you know judge do not judge and you will not be judged so i went with my three boys to the cleveland yeah. guardians game and on the way there we picked up a water from a gentleman and i gave him a tip and then Right before we hit the stadium, um, there was two men. One was playing drums, you know, and had a bucket for money, and the other one was just asking for money. So I, I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm not gonna just drop the money bucket in there right now. But after the game, they were there again, and it's awful to say this, but I judged um, the one gentleman who wasn't playing the drums, and the thought that came in my head was. If I gave him money, is he going to use it for drugs or booze? I did. Mm. And yeah. after that happened, I thought to myself, why do you, why do we continually continue, just do this? Like, why, why are we judging? It is to, to give, to glorify God. It is to give to someone who is in need, um, whether it's food or drinking. Hopefully it's not drugs, right? Like that's the thought, but as we read the verse today, you know, do it to as to me. So if I changed my perspective of this gentleman, or even both of them, from judging to what they were going to use the money for, and to see them as Christ on the street, then yeah. I would have definitely gave some money to them. So what I'm trying to conclude here is that it's hard. This verse and last week's verse are very hard to yeah. implement because it comes first from Luke six thirty seven. The judgment is we judge. Yeah. I and maybe it's our culture, maybe it's the belief system, you know, maybe it's something we've been told when we growing up, like, hey, they're gonna use this money for, they're an addict, whatever. Yeah. But it's a belief system we have and and how do we how do we strip that belief system to reading today's verses? As you did the least to me, you did to to me. Hmm. How do you, how do we view people as Jesus? Every single person, it, whether it's your enemy, someone you disagree with politically, someone you disagree with morally, someone you disagree with in your family. Yeah, it is so hard to strip away our judgments of others and have this true humility and the Christ-like mindset. And it is just like working out is it has to be trained every single day to mm -hmm. release the negative mindset and behaviors and belief systems to the renewing of your Christ-like mindset and viewing everyone like him. And that's hard to disseminate, but we only can get better at it by practicing it. And I will tell you first and foremost from my own experience, it's hard to do. But yeah. I'm trying. That's why I'm. <laughs> that's why I'm giving this information because it's <laughs> it's so authentic. Like it's it's not me just telling you a story to appease and tickle your ears. It's to tell you the truth that I I think yeah. this is one of the biggest things I struggle with is trying not to judge and, and trying to look at everyone as Christ. The oh. Truth, man. Yeah, dude. It reminds me of of a time in our life, and I, and I think there's something. And that's maybe key in this in the story where yieldedness, you know, the Lord asks, he, he sits at the door of our heart and he knocks, right? And not just for salvation, he knocks every day. Like, what are you yielding? Are you opening? Are you opening? You're going to open this door for me. Are you going to let me into this this compartment of your heart that has been locked off, that's been traumatized, that, you know, you don't want to feel vulnerable in? And I'm thinking of a time when, man, we had... We had no money. I was ministering. Um, 
was pastoring um, and, and ministering, kind of part time and ministering itinerantly here and there, but um, preaching and and kind of praying for the sick. And I kind of took that on as like, okay, this is my niche. This is what I'm going to do. Um, kind of train train people to you know pray pray for the sick and that that very kind of niche of of ministry. Um, and my wife one day uh, was praying and she just said, you know, I feel like the Lord. Um, you know, wants us to, to feed, go feed the homeless, you know, I said, okay, like, you know, and I'm thinking we can, we have plenty of friends that do stuff like that, have ministries. And she goes, no, I just, I saw a picture in my head and it was me with a a pot of rice and beans. And, and, um, and I was like at this park and she goes, and I don't really know where it was, you know, but I just saw it kind of in my mind's eye and I just really felt like it was from the Lord. So I'm going to, I'm going to obey and I'm going to do it. And um, she goes, do you want to come? And I just felt really uncomfortable by it for real. Like, like if I can be honest, like, and, and so her, her best friend was like, I'll, I'll do it with you. She's like a wild missionary. She's lived in Africa and, and just the, the more extreme conditions there are, she thrives. And so she's like, Oh, I'll go with you. Like, you know, no problem. Like, you know, the Lord gave you the vision, like we're safe, you know, and I, and I prayed about it and I just felt like I didn't have peace to go, but I felt there was peace for her to go. And so she ends up in South Beach, which is about, a, you know, it's probably an hour drive from where we were living in Miami. And she stumbles upon a place that is this park. You've seen it in movies. You've seen it in shows. Um, it is very, very famous. She's, she went there all the time as a kid and she didn't realize it as a kid. She just saw people hanging out in the park, but they were all homeless. And long story short, she started to go twice a week. I mean, we had no money. The Lord provided miraculously every week, not only for our bills, but like probably seven or eight hundred dollars a month at when it was all said and done. We're like, how did we just pay to feed all these people? Because it's not like someone gave us eight hundred dollars. Like it stuff just stretched uh supernaturally. And so she got pregnant with my daughter, my, my youngest daughter. And she's like, you know, I, she had rough morning sickness. She goes, I need you to go. And she had become friends with these people. Uh, there were pastors that would go and they would say, okay, everybody sit in a circle. And then they'd make them, if, you know, they'd bring clothes and they'd say, uh, we have food and we have clothes and you need to listen, you know, listen to this message first. And they'd preach for an hour and, and they didn't like that. You know what I mean? And, and the, pastor that was there would challenge and you need to give up your alcohol and you need to give up and not that there's not a place for that but they were were like arm's length distance from him and he would say you know you you can come to my church but you know what i mean you need to do this and you need to give this up and blah 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 and you need to dress your best to you know to 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 present yourself to the lord as an offering and and my wife would come and and just not preach to them just feed them get to know them cry with them, laugh with them. She would bring my oldest daughter. They love my daughter. You know, what was funny is they were, you know, it's street stuff. So they're stealing from each other. I mean, it's a rough life. And my wife, my daughter would come home and she'd have gifts. They'd give her gifts that probably they stole from people, like random little (laughs) things. It was just really weird. It was very weird, but it challenged me. And when my wife was like, Hey, you got to go because I promised that we'd go every week, we'd be out there. And I was it was such a simple thing to prepare food. I would cook all the food for her so she could just go, you know? And I thought like that was, that was me serving, you know? And it was, but, but I was very locked off. The Lord was knocking at my heart because every week I wanted to go. I knew I should, as as time went on, I, I felt like I should be going, but my heart was locked off and the Lord was knocking into the point where it would be wrong for me not to go because my wife couldn't go. And I remember I went and it was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. Like no miracle could compare to what the Lord did through in me, in me, not through me, in me. And I went there and people were, I was met with like, oh, you're, you're Pastor Jade's husband. Oh, we've heard so much about you. We can't wait to meet you. You you know, we could have made to meet you and, and all this stuff. And, you know, she'd go there and people would, they'd recruit each other. Hey, you're going to baptize some people in the ocean today. And like, like they were literally like family. They become like this church family that was so unreligious. We never invited them to church. And they started to say, Hey, we want to, we want to go where you guys come from. Like take us to your church. So we'd have to drive out Sunday morning an hour to pick them up, wow. load up a van full of hungover, <laughs> you know what I mean? Homeless people. Yeah, yeah. Take them there. And, 
I found that going there, like just letting go of any, any self kind of preservation that I had, regardless of image of if I, if I could do this, um, was this something that, that, you know, that I'm even called to do, but knowing that there was a need and going in and not preaching and not, not like really like kind of honoring the seed that the Lord sowed in my wife and not going and being like, Hey, let me pray for you. Hey, let me, you know, but being open to just be their friend. Yeah. I mean, they, they really let me in. And I'll tell you the first day I drove back, I was so stirred up. I like wept the whole, the whole way there. I was there with my daughter. She came and I just wept the whole, not the whole way there, excuse me, the whole way home. I just wept. Oh, yeah. And, um, and I continued to do so as I went out and, and I feel like they responded to the honor of us seeing value in them. That wasn't saying, okay, I'm going to, we're going to do an exchange here. You're going to listen to my sermon and then I'm going to feed you. Or if you want these clothes, you're going to have to sit around and you're going to have to let me pray for you. It was just, Hey, how are you doing? A oh, horrible, you know what I mean? Like your, your, your friend just was murdered in the night, like sitting and crying and, and just praying for them. And and not demanding or requesting or putting any pressure on them. And I'll tell you, in me, that is probably one of the most pinnacle moments that I've had in my, in my Christian walk. It was definitely, a, definitely a, a high point where the Lord took me and transformed me. Because at that point on, I started to, I don't say I started to, but it made, me, made it easier for me to see people and treat people um, the way the Lord would, and that I would towards the Lord. Um, yeah. and it was something supernatural happened. And it's like the yieldedness, although I held on to my own, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, uh, fear, uh, fear of man, self-preservation image, all that stuff. I held on with like fought tooth and nail to not let the Lord in. Cause I was scared. Um, which is silly when I think back, like, what was I scared of? Like, um, when I did, he was so gentle he was so good. Grace rushed into, into my life, transformed me. He, he flowed through me into them. And, and, and I would just, I would just say this in in that whole story, yieldedness, yieldedness to the little thing that the Lord is calling you to. Like if, if today it was sitting there and mulling over, Hey, is this guy going to use this money for drugs or alcohol? If he's put you there before him and and changing your, you know, changing your pocket. And if, if that's what he's calling you to do, if it's not more then it, maybe it's even speak to him and and tell him, you know what I mean? Like ask the Lord, Lord, show me, give me a word for him and share something and, and, and affirm him and build him up. You know, like that yieldedness. I think that that slight little, that slight little yieldedness can cause a, a tsunami to happen. Um, where the Lord just rushes in and can transform someone's life. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that. Start with yieldedness. That's really it's a great story, Dan, and I wish I had one like that. Um, but what the Holy Spirit put on my heart during your message was, in the mess is where the message is the strongest. Yeah. And the message is to imitate Christ. and watching the chosen series and how they depicted Jesus of being in the middle of the mess with everybody who Mm. was lame, blind, suffering. He wasn't preaching to them. He was with them in their mess. Yeah. And I think that's what I, I struggle with. I love to help and serve people. I love it, but is it on my terms? Mm. I, most of the time, yeah. So I, I I yield to the Lord, and that's what I'll pray for after you do the tip yeah. to all of us. But go ahead, read the tip, and I'll pray for I us. Will. I think I'm praying to myself on this one. <laughs> yeah. No. Likewise. And you know, and just to affirm what you're saying, like the kingdom is is chaotic. With yeah. Natural eyes, when we look at the Lord moving, and and when the, where the kingdom is present and breaking through, we see it as messy. It is absolutely messy, and and a little scary when we look at it that way. But yeah. when we yield to what the Lord is doing, man, uh, he, like you said, takes, 
takes a mess and he makes a message out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so here's a tip. Uh, your children will learn how to treat others by watching you, not by listening to you. I think we've said that a million times, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. It's, it's not some mafioso do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Um, so your children will learn how to treat others by watching you, not by listening to you. Acts of kindness speak louder than words. That is so true. Yes, it is true. And I'm going to start with a prayer for us as, as simple yeah. as this. Lord, let us yield to, to your will. Let us see people through, through your eyes and not our eyes. And let all of our old beliefs of how we've learned to treat people and, and judge people just be cast away. Let us be in the mess without judgment, but just not even preaching. We just pray that, Lord, that we meet them where they're at. And then by our words and our actions that they see you through, through us. And the best way to do that is just to imitate you, Lord, by our actions, our words, for our families, our communities, and, and those who have no families or homes. So, Lord, I ask everyone today that, that they have a spiritual awakening, that they yield to your will, and that every single person will judge less and be part of the mess in people's lives for their salvation. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, man, I pray. <laughs> it's good. You know, I, I just say this and I'll end here. And you did a beautiful story, wonderful story, is everyone's at a different place in their relationship with Jesus. And that yeah. literally is why we're here. I mean, we're, we're 30 two weeks in and you know i guess the best message i could say to you is that just continue your walk with him you'll never be perfect never but you're striving to be like him each day hmm. and you will fail but you will have gains and yeah. the more that we learn through wisdom of how you lord acted on earth to show us the the right path to love and to do good works. And we know we're saved by grace, but we need to be the light houses to others. We cannot be under a bushel basket. Mm -hmm. We need to go out and spread the good news into this world that's become much more secularized in the Western hemisphere. So not by preaching, but just sharing love, joy, and peace to everyone. So I pray that for, for you today. I really mm -hmm. do. Amen. All right, Dan. Another great episode, man. Yeah. Never, never a dull moment when we're together. No. All That's right, everyone. Good. Like, share, comment, be blessed, and we'll see you next week.